Hey, welcome to Follow Me, the teaching ministry at Wayne Fleet BIC Church here in Wayne Fleet, Ontario. And we are happy to have you join us each week. Thank you for coming. Some of you watch this on Wednesday nights when it debuts. Others are catching this on YouTube, maybe throughout the week. Thank you for being a part of Follow Me. And we have been taking the last couple of weeks looking at uh, questions that we have um, that maybe you have also. And so we're just sharing some of these questions with, uh, with those that follow this program. And so uh, we're going to look at today maybe a subject you've thought about, uh, actually a couple of subjects. And the first one is, uh, how do we have free will if God knows everything we're going to do? That's a great question, isn't it? How do we have free will if God knows everything we're going to do? In other words, uh, the person asking this question perhaps is wondering, uh, do we really have this opportunity to say yes or no uh, without somehow back in time it was dictated that on this date at this time that I would say yes or no to something. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like, um, now Julie's behind the camera. You, you, you're, you don't see Julie, but she takes care of the camera, Julie Adams, and uh, she's got tan sandals on and Turquoise, right? Yeah. Okay. She's saying yes. So she has turquoise. Uh, her her nails have been um, uh, toenails have been painted turquoise, and um, and she's got uh, slacks and the top on. So um, there there would be those who would feel like that God knows and dictated and put into her mind and has known for eons of time that she would wear slacks and a top, tan sandals, and have turquoise uh, nails, toenails. And um, that really she didn't have any choice in it. That she may feel like she had a choice that she chose turquoise for the paint on her nails over red, and uh, she went with tan sandals instead of black. And, you know, but really that is what God dictated to her that she would wear and knew that she would wear that on this date and time. Then there's another group who would say, well, God knows what she was going to wear in his foreknowledge, knowing what choices she would make and that um, she chose, she was in the mood for tan sandals and uh, slacks and a top and turquoise toenails. So that is what she chose. She had the free will to exercise that, and God knew about it. God knew that on this date and time that she would choose those things, but he didn't dictate it. Um, wow, there, there's a big difference there, isn't it? Uh, where is free will in who God is? Well, I, I personally think that probably it's more on this last analogy that God, I believe God is omniscient. That means that he's all knowing. I, I think he's omnipresent. That is, I think God is, uh, is here. I think he's where you are right now. I, I think God is the spirit who has the ability to do that. Not like Santa Claus that says, hey, you better be good. Don't be naughty. You better be nice. Santa knows what you've done. That's kind of creepy to think this fat old guy knows and watches your kids, right? And um, But it doesn't seem creepy to me that there is a God who is intimately aware and concerned and cares about you and me. You say, Pat, come on, man. There's 8 billion people on the face of, of the earth. How can God know what they're thinking and what they're deciding and, and all of that? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But I believe what I've read through Scripture, that he's not Santa Claus. 
I believe that he's a spirit, that he's the creator, designer of the universe, and that he is this God who made humanity in his own image and wants to have relationship with him. And that we can choose to have relationship with him or we can choose not to. You know, free will is something I think is probably the greatest gift and maybe curse that has happened to mankind. It goes back to, we would say, it goes back to the book of Genesis where Adam and Eve were created and God put this beautiful environment around them and he put the, this beautiful opportunity to uh, really be the mother and father of earth and to oversee it and to be able to have uh, their kids come into this world. And it would have been a very beautiful, idyllic setting. They weren't robots. You know, they, they weren't created to, okay, I will obey God now. Okay, I will do what he says. No, I, I don't think so. I, I believe that one of the greatest blessings that God has ever done is give humanity free will. And if you think about it, this personal God, if he's really wanting to have relationship with us, God is smart enough to know, I want them to choose me, not be programmed to love me or obey me. My wife, Carol, we've been married 48 years. Um, well, 48 years coming up. And um, we met in uh, high school. And I will tell you right now, uh, Carol had free will. Uh, now, you may question her judgment that she would want to be with somebody like myself. But the point is, she had free will. When I said, Carol, would you marry me and spend the rest of your life with me? She could have said, no, no, I, I, I think I can do a whole lot better, which she could have. And I think that, I think she could have, and what she did say, oh, yes, Pat, I do. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Uh, she had free will to do that. What if somehow I hypnotized her that she would love me, adore me, make breakfast in bed every day for me, that she would just be everything that I wanted her to be because she was programmed? Would that really be love? Could I really live with some, something like that? Would it really be any choice on her part? And, and the truth is, I would much rather she choose to love or that she choose to want to do something nice than it would be for her, well, I got her programmed, you know, this computer inside of her. I believe God is the same way. God wants to have a relationship that's built on love and desire to be with him. He didn't want to just program us to be robots that would follow him. You, you said free will is a curse. Well, it's a curse from the standpoint that Adam and Eve chose in their free will to walk away from God. And they became broken. They became something God didn't really want them to be. They chose to walk away what would make them to flourish as humans choosing to do it their own way. He said, well, why did God do that? Because God loves us. He chooses to love us. And he wants us to choose to love him. And so free will is something that, does God know every decision I'm going to make? Yeah, I think in his foreknowledge. Now, this is kind of deep. But I, I think God sits outside of time. I, to him, there is no past, present, or future. He, he's just present. You know, I, I believe that is who he is. I think the Bible kind of teaches that. And I, I believe that he knows the decisions I made in my past or that I'll make today or in the future. He, he knows that. And I believe that God in his love for me wants me to choose to follow him, to follow his ways, to follow what we believe the Bible teaches about the best flourishing for humanity. 
but I do and I can choose not to. Now, are there consequences to following him? Yeah, there's good consequences. Are there consequences to not following him? Yes, there are. There's always consequences to every decision we make, you know. And that's the second segment that we're going to look at today. Uh, one of the questions that people ask many times, Pat, do you really believe that there is a heaven and a hell? And what is hell? And what is heaven? Is heaven really going to leave this beautiful world and we're just going to be on clouds wearing robes and angel wings and strumming a harp and that's just what we're going to do for the rest of eternity? Can I tell you right now? That doesn't sound like how I'd want to spend my eternity. How about you? You know? Um, it is, um, or is God going to send me to hell? Is he going to send me to this place of fire and damnation and I'll be there forever and, and, um, and maybe I'm going to party there. Maybe there'll be this huge party in hell and, and maybe that's where I can really enjoy life. And no, I, I, I don't envision heaven being the first or hell being the latter. I, I don't envision that. Because I don't think that's what Jesus teaches us. And in his teachings, Jesus taught us that heaven is a real place. That it, it's as real as the chair you're in or the car you're driving in right now or, or the sidewalk you're walking on, wherever you are, whatever you're doing when you take in this broadcast. And I think that not only is it real, but it's this beautiful place of of love acceptance i think it's this beautiful place of being with god and i think it's this beautiful place of of reunion and a beautiful place that we will live and yes even work and play yes i believe that heaven in the hereafter is a real place with a real life, real buildings. Jesus said in his teachings, he said, hey, don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. You believe in God? Well, believe also in me. He said, in my father's house are many dwelling places. And uh, if, it, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So is Jesus a contractor? Well, I don't know. I don't know if he's a contractor, but, but I, I believe that heaven is this place of, of uh, it's described in Revelation as a place of light. It, it is a place with uh, uh, city dwellings and streets. It is a place that has uh, walls around the city. Uh, it is a real uh, physical place even though um, it is in the hereafter, if you will. You say, Pat, that just sounds so hokey. That sounds like a pipe dream. Well, I, I get it. I, I, I understand that there's people who believe there's nothing beyond the grave and that we're just worm food. I, I, we, we've talked about that on this program before. Uh, thankfully, I believe that Jesus teaches the opposite. And I love his teachings about it. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I want you to be there with me. And then he said in that same passage, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that no one comes to the Father but by me. And, and so there's this beautiful opportunity to enter in relationship with Jesus into following him, being his disciple, uh, believing who he is, believing what he's done on the cross for us, the forgiveness of our sin and our shame, our brokenness, and, and that we have this beautiful life that Jesus wants us to enjoy now. Really, heaven begins now. You know, people talk about, well, I don't believe in hell. I think hell's on this earth. And we're, we're, we're going to talk about that in just a second. I also believe that heaven is also on this earth, that it begins 
when you give your life to Christ and when you follow Jesus and follow his teachings and that there can be flourishing as human beings in the midst of the brokenness around us, that heaven begins the moment we give our life to Christ, but that one of these days, none of us get out of here alive, one of these days, as our body may stop, it may cease, but the real us, the real pad hand is inside, and my spirit will go to be with God who is a spirit. You say, that's scary to me. You know, it's interesting. It's not scary to me at all. It's very peaceful to know that this temporary life, if I live, I'm six, I'll be 67 here in a couple of weeks, Lord willing. And uh, if I live another um, 33 years, holy moly, I'll be, uh, I'll be 100 years old. Julie, how old will you be in 33 years? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is nothing. She'll, she'll, be, she'll be a mere, mere child at 72. Uh, I'll be 100 years old if I live that long. And you know, we think, wow, that is a long time. No, not really. It, it has flown by so far. Um, this is just temporary down here. There is this place that God has created where he is, where he wants us to be with him. And it's heaven. And the Bible says in Revelation that there's a day coming he'll wipe away all tears. That, it, that it's this place of, of love and joy and peace and hope. No, that's not a pipe dream. That is a real place. And Jesus taught that. But he also taught that there is a place called hell. A place called, uh, in the Greek, it's called Hades. That it is a place of the dead. And you say, Pat, would God really send somebody to hell? And I, I think um, we're going to revisit free will here for a second. No, I, I don't think God sends somebody to hell. I think there are consequences to the decisions that we make. You say, what do you think hell is? I'm not sure. Jesus taught on hell as a place of darkness. Uh, it was a place of, of, of fear, a place of, he called it weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. That is where somebody's in so much pain where they gnash on themselves. He called it a, a place of uh, uh, outer darkness. Uh, he, he used uh, the word uh, speaking of a chasm that is built or is there between life and death and between heaven and hell there's this chasm this place of hell i think i think the thing that makes hell to be this awful place is that the best way i can describe it from how jesus has described it it is a place where there is no presence of god now think about that for a second you may not be a church attender but the fact is, you walk outside today, and there's a beautiful sun, and blue sky, maybe a nice breeze coming into your face, and beautiful trees and grass the designer creator has given us. And there's this sense of himself in the world, even with all of its brokenness. But hell is a place of separation. It's a place of separation from God. Hell is a place where God won't be. His presence won't be there. His, his uh, physical self will not be there. His spirit will not be there. I think one of the things that makes hell, hell, is that people who have chosen not to have God in their life will get their wish. And will spend eternity without God in their lives. I think hell 
is as real a place as the, the heaven we were just talking about. And I think it's just as real a place as this library we're sitting in right now, and the chair I'm sitting in. But I will tell you this, I don't believe for one minute that that's where God is wanting you and me to be, that God is wanting us to be with him. We're going to talk about evil in the world. Is there really a devil? Are there really angels? We're going to talk about those things coming up. But I want you to know today, God's design for you for flourishing as a human and in your spirit is to be with him. And can I encourage you following Jesus? That is where forgiveness and peace is. That is where joy comes. That is where brokenness is healed. That is how we're able to endure the brokenness of this old world it is Jesus and following him. And I want to encourage you to do that. And we can help you with the questions you might have about it. And just please reach out. Pat at Waynefleet BIC. That's Waynefleet. You see it up on the screen. BIC.com. And let's begin a discussion. Even if you think everything I've said is the biggest bunch of hooey that you've ever heard and that it makes you matter in a goat and you hate to hear this, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Let's dialogue. Let's talk about it. Or maybe today, maybe God is saying, hey, this is real. Listen to this guy. I love you. I want you to know me. We can help. And I want to thank you for being a part of Follow Me today. And we're going to keep answering some questions for a while. Again, we're not the all be all answer, but I think we can point you in the right direction. Hope you have a great week. Thanks for being a part of the uh, Follow Me today. And I hope it's uh, helping to answer questions. Take care.